Hi, all my creator friends. Welcome. Welcome to Saturday's Crafting with me. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. I think I have a pretty cool project in store for us. So come on in. Please say hello when you get here. Hi, Greg. If um, you see that red live box right up there in the corner, it means we're live. If you don't see it, no worries. Just hit hashtag replay. That way I can say hello to you. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me today. I love our crafting Saturdays together. So much fun. So I am Christy. Let me introduce myself first. Christy, um, the owner of Uncommon Necessities. We're located here in the Town Square Mall in Port Orchard, Washington, 1700 Southeast Mile Hill Drive. Our shop hours are Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So um, come on down and say hello to us. Stop by and see what's happening down here at the Town Square Mall. We would love to see you. I am a Iron Orchid Design retailer. Uh, stockist, actually Iron Orchid Design Stockist, and a Dixie Bell uh, chalk paint retailer. So we do carry those products for you. We also have a lot of great other um, handcrafted items and home decor. Um, so a little bit of everything for everyone. So come on in. I hope everybody is having a great Saturday. Um... <clears throat> I think it's just cloudy out. I don't know if it's raining or not. Oh, my lovely assistant says it's beautiful out, so that's great. It's always great to have a nice, beautiful day. We do have some things happening down here at the Town Square Mall. Um, we have Casino Night tonight, and that is happening from 6 p.m. to 11 so if you want to come down and join um, us here at the Town Square Mall for casino night, all you have to do is show up and um, buy a ticket and you'll get to play casino games. They have card games, they have bingo, a um, few other things. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So our shop will be open from 6 to 11 tonight. And then... Saturday and Sunday, May 6th and 7th. I know I gave you guys kind of the wrong dates before, but May 6th and 7th, we are having the Spring Days um, crafting event here. Um, so the Seroptimus group is putting on a large craft show. So there'll be vendors all along the first floor and second floor. Lots of great vendors. Um, and that'll be on May 6th and 7th, Saturday and Sunday. And of course, we'll be open. So we would love to see you for that. Um, and then we have our night market on May 15th. I believe it's May 15th. And that's going to be comedy night. And I believe there is four or five comedians that will be performing here in the Town Square Mall. And that is from 8 p.m. until midnight. So mark your calendars for that. And that's going to be a ton of fun as well. And our shop will be open as well. So there'll be vendors, there will be comedians here performing, there'll be DJ music um, happening. So lots of great fun happening over the next weekends down here at the Town Square Mall. So if you um, are looking for something to do on a Saturday night, come check us out. We probably have an event going on. So welcome, welcome. If you're just getting here, please say hello. I'd love to say hello back. Um... Yeah, so a lot of exciting, fun things happening. Like I said, I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Um, let's see what else is happening. Gosh. Just a lot of events going on. All right. So I'm going to get us started. And I think I have a pretty fun crafted store for us today. Um, what we're going to work with is I picked up a uh, cheese board at the dollar um, spot area in Target. Hi, Jamie. 
ask your mom if she wants to go to a school auction. I will. I will definitely ask her. Hey, I'm glad you could join me today, Miss Jamie. Haven't seen you in forever. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So I picked up this cheese board at um, the dollar spot in Target, and I paid $5 for it. I went ahead and painted it uh, with two coats of chalk paint, Dixie Bell um, in the color cotton. So I used this. I've already done two coats front and back to get us started. And um, well, hopefully mom should be on, I'm hoping, during the live. So we'll see if she shows up. It'll be a surprise. So we're going to use, um, let's see, where else are we going with this? Okay. We're going to use this decoupage paper that I got. It's so beautiful. I don't know if you can see it, but it has um, can be. glittery. Um, what's that called? It's like a gold embossment. It's like an embossed um, decoupage paper. So we're going to use that today. And I do carry um, decoupage papers in our shop. So there's that. We're going to use the color Manatee Gray in Dixie Bell chalk paint. We are going to use our IOD Mold Trimmings 1 and the Air Dry Clay. We're going to use the Dixie Bell uh, or Iron Orchid Design Air Dry Clay to make a couple of mold pieces. We're going to use Tight Bond Quick and Thick. This is Really great glue, works on everything, dries clear. And then we're going to also use a stencil that I got from Vintage Retail Therapy by Mara. And she produces these stencils. So she created this and she sells them on her website. So if you're looking for great stencils, go to Vintage Retail Therapy by Mara, uh, dot com. And she's got some great stencils listed. So we're going to use that today as well. So is everybody having a good Saturday so far? I hope so. All right. So I'm going to use for my decoupage medium today, I'm going to use my Dixie Belle clear flat coat. That's what I'm going to use to put our paper down and all that good stuff. So if my assistant can help with turning the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Looks like your mom's watching too. Oh, good. Janice, are you on here? Mother, mother, are you watching? If you're watching, say hello. Miss Jamie is here watching as well. How's that? Perfect. Uh, it's a little bit crooked. Go. All right, friends. Can everybody see okay? There we go. Say hello, Mom, if you're here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decoupage on our decoupage paper. So let me get that out. And I'm going to show you how beautiful this paper is. It has this gold embossment on it, which is so pretty. I'll give you an up close look. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's kind of this uh, vintage blue with gold. Look at all those goodness. So I'm going to actually, we're going to decoupage this bottom piece onto this cheese board. So let me, <clears throat> let's get that cut out. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about having the white paper around the edge because it's going to blend in really well to our cheese board. So I kind of prefer there to be white edge as we do it. And so I'm using a water pen. And you can get these on Amazon. You can also find them um, sometimes at the Dollar Tree. Um, but you can use a paintbrush and just some water to do the same thing. And I'm just going to outline 
outline where I want to tear the paper. Now, the reason I do this is it gives me more of a uh, natural look because I'm tearing the paper instead. So some of these are kind of close together, so we're going to have to be kind of gentle as we do this. And I'll show you when we do it. It gives you kind of this unfinished edge which feathers right real nice into your project much better than a straight cut line so we just have to be real gentle because these edges are really close so and if you hear a bunch of noise um i apologize i am in my shop and they are getting ready for that casino night out in the common area so there might be a bunch of noise you hear so I apologize up front okay let's be let's try and be gentle here and not rip what we don't want to rip Anybody do anything fun so far this weekend? It's been kind of the perfect weekend to stay in and craft. It's kind of that dreary, dreary, rainy. Okay, I think, I think we got it off here. Oops. Let me just take some of this extra off. We don't need all of that on there. And so, like I said, you can use a paintbrush with just a cup of water and just dab it in the water and draw your line around whatever it is you want to tear out for your decoupage paper. Now, you don't only have to use decoupage paper to do decoupage, right? Um, a lot of people use napkins. And let me tell you, there are some really gorgeous napkins out there that you can get and you can upcycle many different types of projects using napkins. They are fabulous. The only trick to napkins is making sure that you get the multiple plies off the back so you're just left with the printed one. Now, there are some that like to use iron to iron this down. I prefer just to do with the glue method with my top coat but you can certainly look that up if you want to um, do that method as well okay so let me show you what I mean by the edges so you see how those edges now are uneven and they're kind of like feathered that's just gonna make it that much easier to blend into our project board and this is rice paper and you can do the same thing with napkins as well you can tear it just like this and get those same kind of edges. All right. So let me get my project board. And I've chosen the one that has the queen bee. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm just going to lay it right down here on my board where I want it. Make sure I got spacing and sizing good. I have a little bit of a long piece over here, so pull that out. Sometimes these rice papers have some pretty long fibers, and you just have to kind of pull them out. Okay. So I think I'm going to go like right about there. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. Okay. Let me find my top coat. Here it is. Now, you'll notice that on my jars, I have this plastic. And I'll tell you, I am a person who paints out of my jars. Ideally, you should pour your paint out into a bowl or a cup to paint from, not paint in the, out of the jar. But I paint out of the jar. So one of our um, good friends, Kay, um, gave us the tip to use press and seal the paper 
on your jar and then put your jar lids on so they won't stick because once you've been painting out of your jar your jar lids get tough to open um the press and seal is magic i it's the best thing since sliced bread so let me show you what it looks like so you've pressed on the press and seal look at that so all you have to do now is just lift up the press and seal a little bit to get to your jar now your your jar rims stay clean and easy to open your jar lids so thank you thank you thank you Kay for that wonderful wonderful tip that was the best tip ever so give it a try friends if you have difficulty getting your jar lids open give it a try I'm telling you you're gonna be absolutely amazed on how much easier it makes things so now i'm just painting on this top coat in flat of where i'm going to want to place my decoupage paper and because it's in flat it's not going to show because it's going to dry flat but we're going to end up sealing this project with the same anyways so if you were going to do uh, seal your project because you wanted it glossy. You could do this in gloss um, and that way everything matched. And I think I used the smallest brush I could possibly use to put the decoupage on or the top coat on, but we'll get it on. Okay. Now I'm going to lay my paper down, hopefully pretty close to the middle. I'm going to put that crown and that B right under the middle of where the handle is. I'm going to hold it up and look at it. Move it down just a smidge. Okay. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the middle out and I'm going to, so I can smooth out any air bubbles I may have. So that is the reason you put the layer of uh, medium down, whether it be Mod Podge or Top Coat. Um, you put that down first so you can lay your image down and then smooth out any bubbles. So you have a nice flat surface. Okay, so we're going to go back and add a little bit more decoupage to these edges so they lay right down onto the board. That one's kind of folded up a little bit, so let me uncrinkle it. There we go. Now, if you want to reposition, you can reposition. It gets a little bit more difficult when you're talking about using napkins to reposition, but rice paper is a little bit more forgiving, and it is a little easier than if you decide, oh, it's not in the right spot. To reposition you can easily usually pick it up and move it so I'm just putting a little bit more glue down here around these edges and kind of smooth them down and then we're gonna put another coat right over top of it so we have it good and sealed onto our project and I know that um, there we go. Okay, now we're just going to take our brush, working from the inside out, so we make sure we get any bubbles. We're just going to put a layer of this top coat down. Oh, there's a little, a little fuzz. I don't want that there. There we go. And we're just going to brush that out. I hope everyone's having a good Saturday. And if you're just joining, say hello. Let me know you're here because I'd love to say hello to you. Do me a favor. If you get a chance, please go in and share our video out so we can get more friends to join us on Saturdays. We would love to have as many friends join us as possible. Crafting with more um, is always merrier. I got a little black something right there. 
I might have to put a little bit of white paint over that. It's fine. Okay. So we're just going to keep working towards the outside so we get it good and covered. Another little fuzz like it's way in. Sometimes when you're working with um, white paint, you're going to find that all sorts of fuzz comes out of nowhere and just shows up. And it's like, that wasn't there a minute ago. Yeah, well, it comes out of nowhere. sneaks up. There we go. There we go. Almost done with sealing this on. Now you want to make sure you got this good and down um, because you don't want it to bubble up on you and you want it to be good and sealed. And protected. Okay. I think we got it down and we're good and sealed. It's not perfectly in the center, but you know what? It looks pretty fabulous. Hi, Mom. Welcome, welcome. Jamie's on here as well. Jamie says hello. She has a question for you. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Okay. Now that we got that down, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do some clay. And I thought it would be good to put a border up here and we'll put a border down below. So let's get that going. And the way I chose my border was, if you notice, in this picture, I don't know if you can see it, um, but right down here, what's outlined in this B, besides the frame, is these roses and flowers. And so I chose the edging, or the trim, that has roses and flowers in it. So we're going to do this one here. And this is the trimmings one mold. And I love IOD uh, molds because I don't know if you can see, but I've mentioned this before. There is a little micro rim on your mold. And what that does is it allows it much easier to pull that level and pull that clay right off. So all you do is take some cornstarch, put it in your mold. You don't have to be too careful with this. Just put it in there. Have fun. Have fun and stick it in. Stick it in the mold. Just get it good and covered. And then once you get it good and covered, all you're going to want to do is tap it out. Okay. So then you can see I just have a good dusting in my mold. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use my air dry clay. I always keep it in an airtight um, container. This is air dry clay. Um, all of these things, the mold, the air dry clay, um, we carry that in shop. 
So if you want to stop by and pick it up, you certainly can. We do have it in shop here. So it's pretty awesome. So I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. I'm so glad you guys could join me today. I appreciate your support very, very much. If you get the chance, uh, please share this video out so we can get other friends to join us as well. And if you're not already following, um, if you wouldn't mind, give me a little follow. Just have to go to my page and hit the follow button. What that does is it allows you to see notifications um, from whenever I post um, things in the group. We also do have a Creator Corner page, which is a page for you guys to post any and all creations that you're working on so others can see what you're doing. And I would love to see what you're working on. And it doesn't have to be just things like this. It could be anything that you're working on and creating. So please feel free to join that page and share your creations. We would love to see them. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this out to be kind of a long kind of tube as best I can. doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just going to place it right in this mold, give it a good push down right in there. Now you want to make sure you're working on a solid surface so that way when you press into your mold, you're not bending your mold just give it a good press right into that mold. Now I use my famous tool, my thumb. You can use a paint scraper um, like this to take off the excess, which will work as well. Um, you can use a credit card, whatever you want to use to get that excess off. I tend to move my mold when I'm doing these long trimming molds um, lengthwise to me. So that way I have the ability to just kind of scoop my thumb along and pull that clay off. Now you do have to be a little careful that you're not pulling all the clay up with you as you're um, doing it because it is um, corn starched. So you can use your hand, other hand that's free, to kind of hold that clay down as you're pulling away from you. And that'll help kind of hold the clay into the mold as well. So I just work back and forth, pulling that clay off. That micro rim is so helpful in this because it gives me that guide of how much I need to, to remove so I don't remove too much or too little. Here I didn't have it quite pushed in all the way so let me add a little bit more clay back in. <clears throat> now I'm going to flip my mold around and then do the same on this end. Needed to add a little bit more back. Okay, now I can do my kind of my cleanup work of making sure it's pressed in there really good so I get a good impression. Now, <clears throat> The next thing I like to do is I just kind of run my hand over it and any extra I pull off. So that way I get a nice flat back. Get my clay together there. So I just kind of smooth it out. Now I always like to do the cleanup on the edges while the clay is in the mold but you can clean up your edges once it's out. Not a big deal, easy to do. But we're just gonna kind of give it a nice little clean up there. So now you can see how clean those edges look. That micro rim makes such a huge difference. I am gonna put this extra clay back in because it will dry as we're working. So I wanna make sure it stays as moist as it can. So I'm gonna push it right back into my clay put it back in here. Now to demold your clay, all you're going to do is flip your mold over just like that. You're going to take the corner and you're going to gently roll it back. And let me turn it towards you so you can see. 
you're going to gently roll it back. And as you roll, you see how that mold is coming right out. And you might have to use your finger to kind of help it along. But otherwise, it's just going to come right out of that because you used the cornstarch. And you just keep rolling and keep rolling. There we go. So we have our first one done. So let's get our cheese board back. Kind of gently pick up our clay. And I'm going to lay it on here. Now, you'll notice that my board has round edges. I'm okay with that. Um, it's not going to be hard to be able to match those round edges. So what I'm going to do is push this straight edge all the way to the straight edge here just like that. Now remember, air dry clay will shrink a little bit. So you do want to plan for a little bit of shrinkage. So I will have a little bit extra on this side here and a little tiny bit extra on this side here. And we're just going to take an X-Acto knife. If I can get it open. And we're just going to cut this extra off. So let me put that up here again, right at that edge. Just a tinsy little bit hanging over. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to give it a cut right where I want to cut it. Now be careful you don't cut yourself. So let me put this down since I know where I want to cut it. Yeah, be very careful. We don't need you to cut yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my finger and kind of smooth that edge out a little bit. Lay it back down again. Now, you can either use your X-Acto knife if you want and trim that around. And trim that around. But all I'm going to do is kind of just push it so it matches that edge. I'm just going to kind of squish it together so it matches that edge. So I'm not going to actually trim that corner off. I'm just going to kind of mush it a little bit. There. Now we've got our top edge. So I am going to take and let's make the bottom one. Sorry if you're hearing all this extra noise in music. Yeah. Um, we're working on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we'll get our clay good and soft again. And we're going to Put some cornstarch back in our mold. Thank you, lovely assistant, for taking care of that. <clears throat> I appreciate it. Mr. FB doesn't like it when he hears music that we haven't written ourselves in our videos. I mean, I'm, yeah. So we have to be careful about what music is playing around us. Isn't that crazy? All right. Now, all we're going to do is the same thing. No, I was just saying how wonderful you are to take care of that. Just tip it over. Whoa, I just made a powder mess everywhere. Okay. I'm going to roll our clay back up again. <clears throat> so, again, if you weren't here at the very beginning of the video, um, on May... 6th and 7th, we're going to have a big craft fair here called the Spring Days, and it's put on by the Seroptimus Group. And there'll be lots of vendors here um, with booths on the first floor, second floor. So you can certainly come down and check that out. It'll be a lot of fun. Tonight we have Casino Night here at the mall that's put on by a Rotary Group. And that's happening from 6 to 11. So if you want to come down and participate, 
There is a ticket involved, but you're certainly more than welcome to. Also, I want to make sure you guys know that there's another great art studio um, in our Town Square Mall called Dana's Poor Expression, um, where you can paint poor, uh, no brushes involved, and she has a lot of great events also. So if you check out her website, it's called Dana's Poor Expression, and she's just two doors down from me and a lot of great different events that she has um, where you can paint for with friends and partners and all sorts of things. So give her a check out as well. My clay got a little bit dry, so, because I was, had so much cornstarch on my hand. You gotta be careful of that. If you get cornstarch on you and you mix it into your clay, it does make your clay a little drier. So just be aware of that. Um, but she's great. She has um, different types of um, pours that you can do. You get to choose. She has different surfaces that you can pour on. So certainly come down and check her out. Lots of great things there. Um, the bookshop under the stairs here is also having a great event right now. Um, I believe if you check out their Facebook page, you can buy, they have clearance books right now, and I believe now until the end of the month, it's $10 to fill up any bag with their clearance books. Any size bag for $10. That's a great deal. So come check them out. And I know they also have some different events that they put on throughout the month as well. Lots of things happening down here. So if you're ever looking for something to do, head on down this way because there's probably something happening. Make sure you also follow the Town Square Mall Facebook page because they will always um, post um, events and things that are happening as well. So, okay. Now let's smooth that out a little bit. So we have a nice flat back. Looks good. Let me put my clay back in here so it doesn't get dried out too much more. Sometimes what I do if I feel like it's getting a little bit dry is when I put it back in, I kind of knead it with the wetter clay. <clears throat> and that helps soften it back up as well. Okay. Now let's take this one out of the mold. Flip it over. And we're just going to pull that corner back. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful how that happens? Perfect. All right, so we have our top one and we still got to glue it. Now we need to figure out our bottom one. And we'll lay that right down here. Which end do I want? Let's go with this end. So this curves a little bit more. So you have an option. You can either put that up where the curve starts and just do it from there. Um, or down the very bottom. I kind of think I like it up here. Above just where the curve starts. Kind of thinking I like that. Hmm. Or do I want it down here? I think I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to make an executive decision. Okay. So I'm just going to take my straight edge again, make sure I've got this really good and lined up, and then it does shrink just a hair, so you want it just a touch over. I'm going to make my mark here so I can get it started, and then I can slide it down and cut it the rest of the way. Put this clay back in. Okay. Now let's see. Okay. And you 
might have to do a little bit of adjusting when you put this on. Just make sure it's good and fits. Okay, let's glue these down. Let me put this exacto knife away before I hurt myself. Okay, so I use Type Bond Quick and Thick. I find it works on just about every project. As a matter of fact, I haven't had a project it doesn't work on. All I'm going to do is turn my mold over. Try and get some glue out of here. It's a well-loved well bottle. And you want to make sure you get a good layer glue on there. It does dry clear so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to take my brush and now I'm just going to brush it all the way out to the edges of the mold to make sure they're going to have lots of glue on them. If you get too much glue when you put it down and it squishes out and you don't like it, you can always just take a little towel or something, a, wipe, a wet wipe, and wipe it back. Um, but you do definitely want to make sure you have enough glue down so it stays on your surface. Okay. That looks good. All right. Flip it over. And now we're going to push it onto our board. Okay. Now you want to make sure that these edges are down good and sealed to your sealed to your board. That looks good. Okay. Push it up just a hair. I want it right to that edge. Okay. Now we're going to flip this one over. Put some glue on it. If you're just joining us, let me know you're here. Say hello. I'd love to say hello back. I hope everyone is having a great day. And staying warm and dry. Like I said, it's the perfect day for crafting. It's a great day for crafting. And we'll just brush this out to the edge. Now, we do have a couple of different types of trimming molds. Um, so we do have quite a selection of those. So if you have a different project in mind, we do have different ones. We carry the majority of the Iron Orchid Design molds. So there's only a few we don't have, but if it's one you want, we can certainly order it in. Um, just let us know and I'd be happy to get that for you. All right. It was so available. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all the glue we're gonna need, so I'll put that in there. Now I'm going to turn this over whoop, and place it down where I want it. Want to make sure those edges are down good. Give it a good little press. Now with the air dry clay, after a few minutes, you are going to want to make sure you go back and you reseal those edges down because sometimes they are a little tricky and they will pop up on you and so you just got to kind of babysit them for just a few minutes to make sure they go down and that they stay down and like I said if you have too much glue and you don't like it you can certainly just take a wet, babe, uh, wet wipe or something like that so here's where we're at so far isn't this cute Okay, see my edge is already starting to kind of pop up just a little bit, so I'm going to make sure 
I push those back down again so they're good and down. Now, the next thing I wanted to do that I thought would be kind of neat on here is I'm going to see if I can fit a little stencil work in. So, I know this is kind of a big stencil, and I'm not sure if it's going to work, or even any if, if any of this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of playing and looking and seeing if anything's going to... Because even if you take portions of a stencil, you can use just pieces of it, right? So maybe we want just this part of a curly cue or something like that. Don't be afraid to look at your stencils and think, is there pieces of it that I like that I could fit in? Um, I am not sure that I can get really anything with, I don't want to intrude on my decoupage. That's my only thing. So I think, unfortunately, these are going to be a little too big. Uh, I might be able to get that curly cue. Hmm. Let's see. See if I can get this little bit of a curly cue on. I might be able to. This one right here. Yeah. Okay. We're going to try and use just this little section right here to stencil. And somewhere I put the gray paint. There it is underneath and I am going to try and stencil a little bit of gray on here. Let's see if we can do it. Could end up being a hot mess. It's okay if it is because all I got to do is paint over it, right? So if I don't like it, I can certainly paint over it. Let me shake this up a little bit. So I'm not too worried if it gets messed up. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Okay. Let's try a little bit of this gray. Pounce that off a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to carefully lay my stencil down. right there and let's see if I can do this wish me luck friends and like I said if I don't like the way it looks I can just paint right over it right but I wanted to add a little bit more and this is not the best stencil brush, but my other one is at home. So we're working with what we got. So I'm carefully trying to hold this. Let's see. That's why I say, don't worry if your stencil is big. See if there's pieces of it that you like and that will work. You might be surprised on 
what you might come up with by looking at it in pieces rather than the whole big image. Okay. Let's see what we got, friends. Oh, that's not too bad. That's kind of cute. It's just a little bit of a just a little bit of a flare. Let's see if we can squeeze it in on the other side. Down here. Let's see if I can get lucky and squeeze it in down here. Or at least some of it. more paint. Now remember, I got this stencil from uh, Vintage Retail Therapy by Mara. Mara, she has her own website, and you can certainly get this stencil. She has others you can choose from as well. Um, but they're just—it's an easy way to add a little bit of embellishment to your project. Let's see. Let's see how that looked. Whoop. Put the lid back on my paint. Oh, how cute is that? Now, um, I do have to wait for the uh, for the um, clay to dry because the what I want to do for this is well, we can go ahead and paint it. So we'll paint it white, um, but I want to put a gray wax over it so you can see all of this beautiful detail in this trimming. So we'll do that um, for the next live. But let's go ahead and paint the trimming white. So we'll paint that white and have that ready to go. Um, what I'll do is the next step once the clay has dried is um, off live, I will paint it with a top clear coat um, in flat. So I'll use this and I'll paint the whole thing in that. And that'll seal it up. And then um, next Saturday, we can add the gray wax to it and see all that beautiful, amazing detail come out. So let's add a little bit of paint. Now, when you do this, you do need to be a little bit careful because your clay is wet. And so you don't want to press real hard. But the other thing you want to be careful of is filling in all that detail with paint. So just make sure you're going over it pretty lightly with your paint, giving it a decent coat, but not filling in all of that detail. Because we want to use the wax to fill in that detail. So right now I'm just giving it a layer of paint so it'll match. This is going to be so cute. And then we'll add some ribbons up here for a hanger. Oops, I got a little too much paint. So if you do find you get a little too much paint and you get in the detail, just kind of go back and gently uh, remove it with your brush. Because we want the detail to be pulled out from the, um, the wax. We want the, the wax to shine, as you would say, and pull out all these flowers this would be a nice piece to hang in your kitchen or you know if you have a hutch that you want to add a little flare you could put this on a stand in your hutch 
You could put it a stand on your kitchen counter even. That'd be cute, a little stand um, with this sitting on it. So we're just gonna give this a little paint here and Now, the reason I don't want to do the wax is because the clay is still wet and you kind of have to be a little bit, you kind of have to push that wax down into these grooves. And so if I do that when the clay is still wet, it will definitely um, misshapen my, um, my clay and we don't want to do that. There, I'm just kind of cleaning up any spots I have. All right. Oh, kind of pulled up the paper there a little bit. Now, I did notice that the edge of this paper is a little bit off-white. So if you want, you can go back in and add kind of another layer of paint to kind of help offset some of that off-white. So it's not necessarily a bright white on the paper. So it matches a little better. Don't be afraid to add paint onto your papers once you put them down um, to help match your surfaces. It's a great way to be able to blend. Okay, let's paint this bottom one. We want to make sure we get all of that down there. All the edge. This is a great way to upcycle something you already have. So if you want to give it new life, give it a new look, adding decoupage paper or paint, fresh coat of paint is always a good way to do that. Um, don't be afraid to go into the thrift stores and, and find some pieces that you are wanting for your home and give them a coat of paint or some decoupage and you got yourself a stunning piece of furniture or home decor. Or if you want to give a gift to someone, upcycling is a good way to help our environment and um, be able to allow you to create and make things that fit for you and your home or your or as gifts. All right, get that edge real good there. All right, I got a good layer of paint. Let me just add a little bit of white here. Around this piece. Because it is kind of looks a little bit dirty against that white. So let me just kind of clean that up a little. Another look. Now this is shabby chic, so there nothing has to be perfect. So if you get a little paint on your paper, it's okay. Nothing is perfect in shabby chic. It's meant to look worn and vintage and loved. there all right so let me show you this my next step will be to um, give it a top coat look how beautiful that is already isn't that pretty so my next step will be to give it a top coat with the flat and then um, next Saturday, we'll come back and we'll add that gray wax here 
and maybe um, a little bit of distressing on the side so it looks kind of worn. Um, and then we'll add some ribbons. All right, my friends. What do you guys think? I hope you like this. And I can't wait to see it finished for next Saturday. So it should turn out beautiful, hopefully. I hope you guys have an amazing day and amazing Sunday. And thank you so much for all of your support as my helper is helping me with the camera. <laughs> it's okay. I got it. All right. Helping me with the camera. Thank you, kind assistant. So here's our project for today. Isn't that beautiful? It's going to be so pretty when it's all done. Let me show you those molds up close. So can you see the detail of those flowers in there? Isn't that pretty? Now that black or the gray wax is going to pick up all of those details. So it's going to look so stunning when we're done. Thank you so much for your support today. I greatly appreciate it. I always have fun on our crafting Saturdays together. Please share my video out so we can get more friends to join us. Crafting with more friends is always more fun even. So thank you. Thank you again for your support. I hope you have a great weekend and a great week. I will definitely see you next Saturday here at 4 o'clock. We'll finish this up and I'll have something else fun for us planned. All right, my friends. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you again. Take care, my friends. Bye, friends. <laughs>